In 2024, the average number of days it took to identify a data breach was 200. That's over six months, and a third of 77 days to contain it. For organizations today, those numbers are terrifying. Cyber attacks, a plague on the business community that just won't go away. Last year saw the highest number of victims for these sorts of attacks. We ourselves, as customers, have to be very cautious. One of the worst cyber espionage incidents in US history. This is only a growing problem. This greatly increases the chances of all of us getting hacked. But there is hope. There are dedicated teams specializing in cyber threat hunting, whose sole purpose is to improve those numbers for organizations. But who are these teams? How do they uncover the threats? And what kind of scenarios do they face? To answer those questions, I traveled to the city of Lisbon in Portugal, to the home of the Logicales EMEA Security Operations Center, to meet with those whose role it is to hunt for cyber threats. So what is threat hunting and what does that mean to you? Threat hunting means different things to different people. What we're really doing is saying, this isn't expected. We can use that to be more proactive than just a reactive stance. To me, it's really taking to the, the role of the digital detective, digging into the evidence and looking uh, for patterns. What do we see on the data we have? Taking a step back, and see what's there in front of you. It's like an old front door, is you can have a lock, you can shut that door and you feel it's safe. But the fact there's only say 20,000 combinations of keys, someone else has got a key to get through that door. But once you put your company on the internet, globally they have access. So you're talking to billions of people who could potentially have a go at that door. That's really what the modern cyber is about is, it's not, I will never get breached. It's when I get breached, what am I gonna do? So if we follow the modern cyber threat scenario where the expectation now is you will be breached, how do the threat hunters prepare for this? What is the starting point? Our first job is to understand, one, the customer's business, and two, the way their system and their platforms operate. After knowing what's normal, you can try to, to find something abnormal. And that's what we do. We constantly, in a proactive way, uh, look into their, their environment and try to spot uh, something that's not quite uh, usual, something that's not expected on their day-to-day. -day. How do you set up a customer baseline? What's maybe some of the technologies or things that you're actually using to establish what normal looks like? By aggregating the, the company's logs, it's not just the login, it's not just a, a device process running, it's, it's the combination of, of all of that. So if a user logs in, does something on the machine, then from that machine goes to another. That's a pattern. That's how we get the abnormal events. So at this stage, I had a good understanding of how threat hunters start with the customer baseline. But what I really wanted to know was, how they use this to spot a potential data breach, and if they could share what a real life incident actually looks like. There's a particular customer I can sort of think of, and during our daily checks, we were looking at it, and one of my analysts felt something was a bit off. On that particular day, it was really saying, okay, there's some risky events uh, around these users, some alerts that were triggered uh, on an unusual location, it was strange, uh, something wasn't quite right. We had a user account or access to platform in the customer's environment from a different geolocation than what we've ever seen in the past. It wasn't impossible to be there. Someone could be on vacation. Uh, there are multiple reasons for someone to be there, but that's not the usual there because the, the company is mostly on the US. So we then asked the question going, is this expected? Is the user traveling? And when the customer came back and went, no, it's not. That's the first trigger point and go in. Well, let's create a bigger incident where we need to investigate. We found a really interesting case. It, it was a bad one. So the malicious actor basically compromised the user account and did a, an app registration, which allowed them to, to maintain um, the activity under the radar. So the activity started from that specific location, but after the app registration, everything 
was going on from the US, so it was masqueraded. And that's how they maintained the, the activity. When the user logged in, just to clarify this point, did it set an alarm off? Or was it because our team decided this looked unusual? There is alarms you can put in place for that sort of thing. Did they have geo blocking? No, they didn't. We noticed that it's logging again from a different country, but we've not seen that again in say the, the last 30 days. It's an anomaly, it's unnormal. So we need to validate that. How did they get access to that user account? So, so what we do is we, we start to, to, to pick the thread and we start to, to make the story. The, the user was compromised from a phishing attack. So they got an email, they clicked on something they shouldn't and something was downloaded to, to the machine and then it started. We alerted the customer, we talked through different options. We then contained that registration and we disabled it. We finished collecting the evidence we need around it and what else it's done. And then we removed it from the system. We identified, we contained, we helped remediate. We then found files being modified by those users and they happened to be invoices. Within that, they changed the account number. We saved about 2.1 million there because if that transaction had been authorized and gone through their internal processes, that's a massive loss. The speed at which the team had managed to solve this issue for the customer and help them save $2.1 million was incredible. In a leading research report titled Cost of a Data Breach, they found that the global average of a data breach could cost customers up to $4.9 million. Now that's a 10% increase over last year and the highest average toll ever. However, they also found that the average cost savings for organizations that use security AI automation extensively in prevention versus those that didn't was a saving of $2.2 million. Even with emerging technologies like SOAR or automation tools, you will still have the need for a senior uh, analyst to look at it and fine tune it. Basing your SOC only on technology makes yourself very predictable and uh, the way that you defend yourself is very similar from each attack to another. Technologies keep evolving, so it's very difficult for companies to keep up with the pace and hire all the operational staff that they need to, to acquire all the protection they need for security. So having a SOC service is a way of externalizing the operations and have someone specialized handle those tools and handle those types of threats by someone who does it every day, 24 seven. What has been the customer's response? Ultimately, they were happy that we were there to, to have their back, to take the lead on, the, on all the investigation and getting uh, all the information and preventing uh, that massive uh, break on their financial side. So uh, I think they were very happy to, uh, to have us there with them. Utilizing threat hunting services significantly reduces the mean time to identify and respond to data breaches. Understanding a company's baseline allows the threat hunters to proactively spot those telltale signs that something isn't quite right. Uncovering and preventing data breaches is a vital role of the modern threat hunting team. But what other scenarios do they face? What are the real life stories that they have to share? And what else can we learn from the incredible work that they do? Continue on this journey with us as we go deeper into the role of cyber threat hunting.